Hello everybody, it's uh, the end of April 2020 and uh, coronavirus is happening everywhere. So I decided to make an overhead panel for the Zeebo uh, on X-Plane. And uh, I made my own uh, wooden structure, as you can see. And I'm trying to do the wiring. So I'm, you know, I'm probably two weeks in. I'll show you the front. The front is the, uh, it's from PC uh, Flight, uh, PC Flights, I guess, dot com, uh, and uh, from New York. They make very nice panels, but uh, the idea, you know, this would be a, a typical panel here where it's the front, but you have to buy all the hardware, which I enjoyed. So I put all the switches in, put the... And they sell some of the switches and some of the uh, cover guards and stuff. So that's all good. Put the knobs in. They do sell beautiful gauges. So all this has happened. And then you have, what you have then is the front of the panel looking great and nothing working. So we come to the back. Uh, and you then get to the point of where I've got a bunch of switches here. I made... Uh, solder connections uh which is probably a mistake i'm sure many people who know how to do this stuff better than i do would tell me that's a terrible idea but i didn't want to like have the screw connections come loose so i thought hey i'll just solder everything but that's been a problem uh i'll tell you about that in a moment but uh the point is is that we've got uh all of the main wires you would say the positive wire the communication wire coming uh they're white and the ground has been daisy chained a few times and the ground kind of like feeds down and at this point i'm at the point of uh having all that done i personally made a, a custom pcb to do the elect panel and as well quite complicated was the pressurization panel uh that was quite a pain but um in any case, I'm only uh, in the early stages here of this thing because, uh, as I will show you down here, uh, this is the bottom part. So if I look back here for a moment, you will now see that's the whole project made out of wood. And uh, so the things you have to do are... Uh, I, at the moment, I want to combine these into two different power supplies. So if you start from the beginning, you've got the power coming from the outside and you've got a USB cord coming from the outside. The power was going to go to a dual voltage uh, power supply that was going to be 12 volt and 5 volt. That broke on me twice, uh, the one that I bought. Um, so at the moment, I've just forgotten about that. And this is a 12 volt that's not plugged in. And this is a five volt that is plugged in. And uh, I'm just going with uh, dual power supplies because your project will certainly need that. Then the next level, that is a USB hub. Uh, this is, as I marked, a 12 volt uh, little bus that we just, you know, screw in. That's nothing. You screw that in. This is going to be the backlighting, if I ever get there, which will be, you know, the 12 volt backlighting. Put the, put, I'm going to put the little relay here so that when I turn the battery switch on and off within the simulator, the backlighting turns on and off, which is, you know, should be great. Uh, we'll see uh right so power supply five volt comes over here goes all the way up and this is my five volt power bus so i'm going to zoom out again because every time somebody made these videos you can't quite see what's going on so let me just come all the way out and I, by the way i don't even know if this is going to work but this is my plan so this is the bottom the power cord comes in here that will be the 12 volt this is the five volt. I kind of wanted them to be the same one, but I keep breaking those. This is gonna be my 12 volt power right here. Uh, that's my USB hub, not a big deal. It needs 12 volt power, so we plug that into there. Now, this is the big problem. This is my communication uh, area, 
and we'll get back to that. That's a big problem that's broken right now. Then up here is all five volt power, five volt positive, and then sort of a ground that's kind of going to everything. And then of course we come up to all the switches and the carnage that is the rest of this project. So the, I, I don't know, I, I, I wanted to make some PCBs on my own because I thought that you know, that would be fun. And I uh, got into making, uh, you know, I made this elect panel, which I will go in the front, but it's a seven digit display elect panel, looks good. And inside of here is a pressurization panel, that, which also looks good. And the rest of this up here is just the stuff that PC Flights has. Oh, and that's a, well, I didn't even get to this, but this is a fidget LED card, which I was gonna do all the enunciators with. And I put two there because that works quite well. Um, so here's the problem that we have. So this is, I'm going to use SimVim. So SimVim is obviously the X-Plane's number one uh, communication software. This is the USB coming from the PC going into an Arduino. This is an Arduino shell. Oh, uh, not shell. Is it shell? Uh, maybe it's shell. can't remember the word. Sorry. Um, uh, in the or little, little Arduino Megas underneath there. Uh, this is a second Arduino Uno that's going to like run the servos, which is the gauges, uh, which is what, uh, the SimVim wants. Uh, it's not even plugged in yet, so don't even worry about that. So this is the Mega, um, USB goes into the Mega. Uh, we've got all this and, you know, just following SimVim's advice of where to plug in the communication stuff, they want to have these, um, multiplexer boards and a multiplexer, uh, I was hoping, oh yeah, I can grab one actually. Um, I can actually grab one. So a multiplexer, which is on the SimVim website, looks like this. It is a, uh, very clever little thing that, uh, as you can see, fits in my hand, 16 channel analog multiplexer. And it's got the little brain, which is the multiplexer itself. And actually I've noticed it's got the, uh, it's got a little resistor and it's got a little capacitor and uh, it all kind of makes sense. I'm pretty sure there's not much else going on. Uh, just good soldering, all good. Um, I will tell you that to solder all of those little legs beautifully is something I don't know how to do very well. So I now will point you towards this board. So I had this idea of designing this times eight, because I'm going to then save the uh, uh, ability to not have to put in the power uh, and the uh, data wires eight times. So here we go. So, so this, is, this is nothing. This is something I thought would be clever. This is the power, five volt and ground, uh, you know, which has to go in. And this is the uh, S0, S1, S2, S3, S4. Um, I've got like a double copy, but who cares? And these are all the uh, signal uh, levels, the SIGs. Uh, that's the top on the right here. I'm just trying not to lose the focus. And... Um, so I then would have eight. So that's one, number two, number three, number four, number five, six, seven, seven eight, because those um, match up with these guys, which as you might remember, look uh, awfully similar to this, or at least I thought they did. Uh, you know, so I've got the brain and I've got the capacitor up there and the resistor down there. So and I did that eight times. So, doing that eight times, uh, soldering that's not easy. So, uh, I would also say a couple of things, even though these screw terminals look terrible, they're actually holding onto the wire. This was 22 gauge purple wire, which I use purple for communication going from the Arduino to there. Um, I was trying to use white uh, 24 gauge, uh, which is not, screwing into these terminals well. It's slipping out all the time and it's a big problem. Uh, and I used also the same stuff on the wires. Now, what was good about the 24 gauge is that the whole thing behaves. And uh, this this um, 22 gauge uh, curls. 
So you have to strip it down, but I mean, you know, I'm sort of able to handle everything. However, it's not screwing in very well to these terminals. Um, and I would be able to deal with all of that, but the big problem here is that maybe it's my soldering. Uh, I did uh, use a continuity test with my multimeter to see if they're good, but these things are no joke to solder. Uh, and so I don't know if things are touching, but so what's working right now for, I, for, I don't know why this one works. This one sort of works. Those two work this entire row, which is going to be these guys that are plugged into there for some reason are, are, are dead. I mean, they just, they just, uh, are crapping out and, uh, and, and I'm getting a whole lot of like electromagnetic interference, which I don't understand which is making me almost want to cancel the project. Uh, this is a second board that also is spazzing out. So I'm going well from here and it starts to spaz out by the time I get there. So I'll just show you, uh, and I'm gonna end this video because I'm talking too long. I'll show you, um, if you look over here, so this is my PC uh, running stuff. And it's probably gonna stop, isn't it? But anyway, you might hear that might hear the clicking but things are clicking and they're not happy and they're not moving well and something is like moving without me flipping any switches over here so uh either i've got an electromagnetic interference situation or i don't know how to make a pcb board which is entirely possible because i'm just trying to wing that but uh, it's very frustrating because we're getting somewhere and then uh, we're getting weird interference. So that's my first video. Um, I will update you more later. And, uh, you know, kind of wanted to give up, but then I thought, hey, I'll make a video of my frustrations and you only le learn from uh, when things go wrong. Okay.